Oi, mate. Wanna buy a tune? So, it is part five, I believe, of my So You Wanna Be A Tuner series. And in this video, we're going to be discussing, as I mentioned in the end of the last video, the black magic of gearboxes. Now, from what I've ascertained from talking to people, in America, the gearbox is often known as the transmission. Now, I don't want to make enemies, but I'm sorry, guys, it's not a transmission. The gearbox is not a transmission. The gearbox is part of the transmission. Now, the transmission is everything that literally transmits, as the name suggests, the power from your engine to get it to the wheels. And that includes everything from the final, uh, not the final drive, the flywheel, excuse me, through the clutch, gearbox, prop shaft, if it's a rear wheel drive or all wheel drive car, back to the final drive, which is within the differential, through the half shafts, to the wheels, and in turn to the road. So what do you need to know about specifically the gearbox? Well, I'm not going to go into complicated ratios or anything like that. There are ratio calculators on the internet which you may find helpful, but I'm not going to be going into ratios. I'm just going to explain to you some basic things that I think are helpful to you in order to understand and just to give you a little bit of a better idea of what you're doing when you're actually changing ratios within the gearbox. So first of all, what is the purpose of a gearbox? Well, a gearbox in a motorbike, bicycle, a car, machinery, tools, anything, it is always for the same purpose. It is a torque converter. That is the definition of a gearbox. That is its purpose. It takes the torque that the engine provides and multiplies it through gearing mathematically into more torque. Black magic, see? And then it transfers that, as we've said, to the wheels, ultimately. So that is the purpose of a gearbox. It's a torque converter. Now, secondly, what do you need to know about the final drive? Now, the final drive is not actually in the gearbox. I'm not sure if some cars may contain it within the gearbox, but as far as I'm aware, by far, the uh, vast majority of cars have the final drive in the differential. So not in the gearbox, after the prop shaft in the differential, and then from the differential out to the wheels. Now the final drive, as many of you will probably have noticed from my videos, plays a major role in the ultimate performance of the vehicle, especially in terms of top speed. Now as I've said, I'm not going to go into complicated ratios and things like that, but the more often than not, the ratio of your final drive will have much more of an impact on your car's performance than the individual ratios of the gears. And finally, another, the final thing within the gearbox that you need to understand is the importance of having a smooth relationship between gears. Now, as I said, I'll say it again, I'm not going to say anything about ratios, specific numbers or mathematical equations. Equations are available, like I said, if you want them or are interested in that, you could check it out on the internet. But uh, basically, all you need to know is that the relationship between the gears needs to be smooth. Is that the curtain in the way? Yeah. The relationship between the gears needs to be smooth. So you don't want first gear taking you from 0 to 110, and then second gear taking you just to 120. So you're going bop, 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 bop. That would be useless. The gears need to be coherent with each other, and when adjusting each ratio, you need to consider it against the gear that's gone before it and the one that's gone after it. Every gear within the gearbox, including the final drive, obviously, although it isn't within the gearbox, affects the gears around it because they all work together. They're not all in constant mesh, but they do work together to give the car its low, mid and top end acceleration and obviously top speed. So that's all I'm going to say about the gearbox itself. But now we can also discuss the differential. The differential 
is for most people even more complicated than the gearbox itself in terms of trying to comprehend it. What is the differential? What's the purpose of it? Well, the differential is kind of like a secondary gearbox. It has gears inside it. It has what's called the sun gear and then smaller planetary gears which work off of that sun gear. And what the differential's main purpose is, is that it allows each of the car's wheels that it's attached to, so in most common case the rear wheels, if you have a differential, usually to the rear wheels only, um, it allows the two back wheels to travel at different speeds. Because obviously if you take a corner in a car, the inside wheel, the car closest to the inside of the corner, is not going to be travelling anywhere near as far as the outside wheel. Because if you're turning a corner, the inside wheel's only got to go a very short way, but the outside wheel's travelling all this way around the corner. So if both wheels were travelling at exactly the same speed, the car wouldn't hardly be able to turn at all. So the differential allows your wheels to travel at different speeds. Now, on Gran Turismo specifically, you can adjust your initial torque, your acceleration bias, and your brake bias. And as most of you will notice, I pretty much always put the initial torque as low as possible. Why? Well, if you have lots of initial torque, torque literally is twisting power. So if you have all of that initial twisting power and grunt, like on 100% in effect, the car will have all of that torque off the line, which just translates into loads of wheel spin. Whereas if you have it on a very low initial torque, that means that the car won't lose so much speed going uphill because more of its torque will be displaced over its whole power band and over all the ratio of the gears instead of just, in effect, using it all up straight away. Now, as far as acceleration and deceleration, I won't get into these too in-depth, but basically all you need to know is what it makes the car more biased towards. So I usually put acceleration higher because you want the car for a straight line. If you want it more for cornering, you might want to have uh, braking bias higher. But that's about all you need to know, really, uh, about the diff. So next time we're going to start to discuss power, the juicy stuff. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.